Hey, what is up, guys, and welcome back. So today we're gonna to be testing this UR UAV patch antenna. This is a nine-dollar patch antenna, and I'm wondering how good is it? Can we get four kilometers of range? Can we get three kilometers of range? Well, we're gonna test that today at around hundred meter altitude. So let's take a look at some of the things it comes with. Obviously, it comes in this box. You get the patch antenna. It comes both RP SMA as well as SMA if you wanted to. They do not bring you an adapter, so take that into consideration. They don't give you some sort of adapter to angle this off of your fat shark. So take that into consideration. However, they do also provide you with a PCB uh, tightening tool. So if you can't get your fingers in there, because you will not be able to get your fingers in there, they've added this also. So make sure you get some, some sort of an adapter that will allow you to install this somewhere very easily. So just take that into consideration. So and again, this thing is $9. So if we take a look at the build construction, it is plastic. And I think there's a PCB inside and it is sealed shut. And I'm not willing to open this up because it actually tested pretty good. Now, some of the specs, it comes either RPS, SMA or SMA and it is a right hand circularized polarized antenna patch antenna to be exact so it has 8.4 dbi of gain which is really good and they're saying incredible 95 efficient i don't know what's that supposed to be 95 percent efficiency but this is where the information gets really interesting it's a 75 degree beam width so you have 75 degrees of beam it's not narrow it's a little bit wide uh which is really good and this is what i've also noticed through my testing and you'll get to see that also it's not as sensitive as for example the arc bird here which is this is a 11 dbi antenna this was really sensitive into the way that i was pointing it uh this one uh, it was more flexible so i was able to get a little bit more range but theoretically this would give me a lot more range if it was pointed in the correct direction just about perfectly but this one just gives you let's just say mid-range it gives you good mid-range and a lot of flexibility of where it's pointing so it's just easier for you to grab signal than just to find the exact little spot in the you know in wherever the quad or your airplane might be now i do recommend this for a uh, drone user, an FPV freestyle or FPV racing drone user, because this is the kind of thing you really want. Uh, something of this nature is way too much, and it's uh, I don't think it's very practical because it was very difficult to get a lock after 3.5 kilometers. It was getting really, really picky on something like this, and I was actually really surprised with the performance of this antenna here. And I'm planning on switching the RJX hobby that I have on my Fat Shark currently with this one an upcoming test and to test them on my fat shark and this to see if they'll perform a little bit better since it'll be on my head and i'm able to move my head uh just make those little fine adjustments with my head and see if that'll give me a bit more range because currently i'm maxing out around 4.1 uh kilometers here 4.1 kilometers at the max i've gotten with the rjx hobby so hopefully this one might be uh might surpass that but currently on the ground station we could say you got roughly around four kilometers of range it can get more uh, but this was just, you know, just the pre-tests of my official setup, which will be upcoming very soon. But uh, I just want to do these quick little tests to give us an idea if this patch antenna is really any good, if it will get more than one kilometer of range. And it turns out to be good. And enough talking. Let's just jump to the testing and we take it from there. All right, guys. So we're about to test the UR UAV patch antenna. And here we have Launch Control's Beauty from iNav. There we go. Just took off really nicely. And this wasn't the case for the last week. Every time I had a chance, I broke the orbit a couple times and I've rebuilt it and I finally figured out what was my issue with the launch control settings. If you guys are interested, let me know. I'll post that somewhere. All right, so here I'm getting into the direction of this patch antenna. Now, what I've noticed about this patch antenna is not is it's not as sensitive as other patch antennas that I've been testing into the direction it's pointing. Now, they are stating that it is... Actually, they're not really stating much. I forgot how much they're stating, how many DBI. But however, it was really good, though. It wasn't as sensitive. And uh, for a mid-range, you know, flight as this, it was actually pretty decent. And I'm planning on retesting this on my Fat Shark. Currently, I have the RJX Hobby patch antenna on my Fat Shark with a Foxier circularized polar antenna, which costs like four bucks. And uh, they're just performing really nice. I mean, they're always outperforming whatever patch antenna I'm testing. So the RGX, I've, I've gotten around 4 km, 4.10 kilometers, I think, of maximum range so far. But I can push it a little bit more. Because here, I've, I was taking off the Fat Shark also and then just pointing the direction down on the ground station. And uh, I don't know. I think yeah, here, when you see my Fat Shark basically disappears, that's me making sure I'm looking at the, uh, what is it called? The ground station, making sure the antenna is pointing in the correct direction. Because with the Fat Shark, I could just move my head right and left to get it into position here. And right now, we're on the 3.9 mark, uh, 2.9, a 3 kilometer right now so far, 3.10 kilometer mark. So it's looking pretty good. Here, I think I was looking through my Fat Shark uh, more than the antenna. 
And then I went back to the antenna and I just started moving it now, I believe, if I remember correctly. Yeah, this is me starting to move it. So we got 3.6 kilometers here and um, 3.7. I still had good feed. The, the, the DVR wasn't showing it as good. Now here I was losing feed quite dramatically and uh, just turned back around. The reason why I turned back around is I kind of panicked because I was seeing the screen static. Now, again, this is forwarded uh, 200 times the speed it was. I panicked and what I did was I saw both my fat shark and the ground station just had no feed. So I set up return to home and I waited for feed to come back. And then once feed came back and everything started to stabilize here, I started looking at the, uh, what is it called? The ground station here and just pointing the, the, the patch antenna slightly. And again, this is happening so fast. But if you can tell what's going on here, why am I losing feed on both of them? is because I was actually accidentally dropping my altitude. It dropped to, as you can tell, 50 meters. I usually do these around 100, mil 100 meters of uh, altitude. And that is why we started to lose a lot of signals. You can tell here, the uh, the patch antenna was doing better at lower altitude also. This is what I mean. It was doing slightly better than the RJX hobby that was on my head. So I'm thinking that if I put this URV, UR, UAV, uh, patch antenna on my fast track, I can possibly get a bit more distance. However, I'm working on a shootout once I have the orbit finally tuned to my liking, such as altitude hold, so I don't have to worry about my altitude and probably even set waypoints and just, just worry about just setting up the antennas and just monitoring both the fat shark as well as the ground station. Uh, that is what I'm planning on upcoming tests, but these are really fun, small mid range tests for now. Uh, so far, what I've noticed. After the four kilometer mark, it's getting a bit more difficult. Maybe I got to gain a lot more altitude, but I just don't want to gain that much altitude. I'm basing them currently all on the 100 meter altitude test. And this is just me still perfecting this testing environment. And at the same time, it just gives us some really nice information about the antennas. What if there's a patch antenna in the market that's just not even hitting 1.2 kilometers? Then this would kind of give us a, great, a good representation that it wasn't good. And well, that's it guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. All the links below, please check the links. They greatly support the channel. I, was, I also do have a Patreon. If you can support me there, that'll be super awesome. And well, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.